What's up, guys? Nolan King here with another edition of the MMA Junkie Twitter Mailbag. Back from Mohegan Sun. I'm in Massachusetts now, ready for 2020 to be over. We got 13 inches of snow outside today in Massachusetts. I am ready for this year to end. Before the year ends, however, we got a couple more mailbags to go through, including the three questions that I picked for this week. One of which, the first one, was asked by multiple people. Daniel J. Edwards asked, why hasn't the match between Kevin Holland and Hamza Chimaev been made yet? And if it does, who do you have with the W? So the first part of that question is, why hasn't it been made yet? And the simple answer is the fact that they are the two middleweight up-and-comers that seem to have the most buzz right now. Um, Chimaev is being put in a pretty massive fight that is above Kevin Holland in the rankings and I think in a lot of people's minds and Leon Edwards. And meanwhile, Kevin Holland has thrown himself in the, the, the conversation about the 2020 fight of the year. So why derail two, you know, you have a 100% chance of derailing one of your promotable up and coming stars that people are buzzing about by having them fight. It's a 100% chance one of them is going to be ruined. Whereas if you if you give them other opponents, guys that maybe are at the top of the division but don't have the buzz or guys that are lower in the division that would be a good stepping stone, that, that's how you promote. That's how you would promote these guys at this point in time. Now, as for the matchup, that's a tough one. You know, Chemayev's obviously got the takedowns. He's got the power. Kevin has fought better people, in my opinion. He'll fight anyone, anywhere, anytime, even when he's not 100%, goes in there and does something like he did against Jocker. I mean, come on. So experience-wise, from what I've seen, Kevin Holland, I lean towards. But I think that Chemayev, I mean, his trajectory, it's hard to imagine uh, you know, Kevin being able to deal with some of those issues. So I lean towards Chimaev, but again, we, we got to see how this thing plays out. We got to see where both fighters are um, as they progress in their careers. Second question comes from Joseph Andrew Shaw, who asks a question about UFC 256 fighter Michelle Pereira. He asks, uh, how far can Michelle Pereira go in MMA if we see the version we have against Sanchez before the DQ in his last fight? Um, and his last fight, excuse me. So Michelle Pajeda is a kind of a, a difficult fighter to, to gauge because there's nobody like him. He's a guy that had a lot of fights. He suffered losses, took the long road to the UFC by being different, he being flashy, getting viral for jumping off the cage. So it's really tough, I think, as tough it is for us to analyze. It's tough for the opponents, too. And I think, you know, he's kind of a fighter that's... If guys fight him, it's a hit-or-miss scenario, right? So you have somebody like Tristan Connolly who doesn't get doesn't get flustered. He's able to weather the storm and he goes in there and upsets Michelle Pajeda. And then you have other fighters who, like Danny Roberts, a guy, another guy that's been around, and it's just, you know, difficult for them to deal with and they get floored. So it's really going to be a hit or miss scenario with him. I think Chaos Williams, though, will be a very good gauge. He's a legitimate guy who's on the rise. You know, he's not a Diego Sanchez, a guy that's kind of older. He's not somebody that's maybe uh, on their way out, like Zalim Imadayev, excuse me, who he fought last time. So to me, this is going to be a good gauge. I think if he wins this, we can start having a conversation about his trajectory towards the rankings. Um, but for now, I kind of have this feeling that he's going to be kind of hovering in the middle of this division for some time. Last question comes from Daniel Lopez. It's a Bellator question. Who do you think wins the Bellator 205 Grand Prix? If they have it, if that's the, the choice that Scott Coker goes with. Vadim Nemkov, Corey Anderson, Phil Davis, Yoel Romero, Gegard Mousasi, Bader, Anthony Rumble Johnson, Machida. Um, Scott Coker hasn't cho chosen which division he wants to, to use for his next Grand Prix yet, but he's getting close to his deadline. They usually like to announce the start of a Grand Prix when it's going to be at the, the conclusion of the last one around that time. So with the Featherweight Tournament going to be wrapping up by March-April timeline, Bellator needs to figure out which direction they want to go in. And, and Scott Coker, you know, he's he's somebody that's not going to come out and say something unless he feels that it's going to happen, in my opinion. He doesn't want to give people an inch and have them take a yard. So him continually pushing this idea of women's flyweight, he, you know, he, he multiple times in interviews kind of leaned that that was the direction that they were going to go in. But he's pulled back recently, and he mentioned men's bantamweight at one point. Last time I spoke with him, he told me that there are multiple divisions in play, maybe one outside of those two, uh, women's 125 pounds and men's 135 pounds. So with him continually repeating that Bellator has the top 205 pound division, I'm going to make a prediction that this is the division that they choose, especially think about the signings they just had. Yoel Romero, Rumble Johnson, 
Um, you know, they have Nemkov as the champion now, Corey Anderson, all the names that, that this that, that was just read off here. So for me, I think that's a division that they should go with. As for who wins, that's really tough. And I have to tell you, I think Vadim Nemkov has as good of a chance as anyone. If you had to hold a gun to my head and make me pick, that's who I would choose. And I think he's totally underappreciated. You see people talking about Bellator's 205 pound division when they talk smack about it and they say, oh, there's all people from the UFC that, you know, were in the top seven and they left or whatever. But Vadim Nemkov is legit, legit, legit. Look what he did to Ryan Bader. Not many people have done that to Ryan Bader and the ones that have are all very excellent fighters. So to me, Vadim Nemkov is my underdog choice in this, even though he's the champion. I think he doesn't have the name recognition and I hope Bellator goes with 205 pounds for this tournament because it would be a doozy.